Hey there, here with a div three today. Uh, about to get started. I'll move this here actually. Hit percent B. So what's the longest? So we got a zero. Ooh, Kennedy's here. All digits are distinct. Oh. The minimum number of total sum. Okay. So N, H, and M. I think this is what I want. Oh. Okay.
So I think this is like a fairly straightforward. So then Lynn and I. If searching at start, then TBI plus one. It I'll uh, figure it out later. Oh, kind of reconstruct. Wait, I'm sorry. What? Uh, this is start. No. This is horribly wrong. Uh, len. I didn't use len, did I? Good. 
Oh, what is this? Len. Three negative one four four two four. That looks reasonable. Just see it. Okay, that took me way too long to reconstruct. Let's read E. Ah, so what is it? What does this do? Zero stays in zero. One goes to two, which goes to four, which goes to eight, which goes to six, which goes to back to two. Oh, okay, so I think there's two cases, right? Like, this should either be all five or. Okay, so that seems good. Um, 
So, so now we're saying they don't have any files. Now there's one, one, two, three. See, so yeah. this is two, four, eight, six cycle. Okay, so now. And now everything needs to be the same mod 20. Then you just do this. Second place, F and G. G has a lot of songs. Okay. Second place right now. Let's keep going. Sum of cost of age. Root to I. Blue is AJ. Two, seven, sixteen, so you can just. Sorry. Oh, five, nine, five. Nineteen, so you need to draw three. Wait, this is super easy. What is this? Oh, we don't have an H. Squared. That's probably fine. Okay. We don't even need the originals, so
fp uh it's just of x or you definitely smell right if then this is fine is F. Let's keep going. More problem. Undirected graph belt centers. Oh, well, yes, that's what it's true is. N. Two to three, three to one. Ooh. I see. So, in terms of get common node, Two of them.
Oh yeah, also <sighs> Why is it less? I think that means you can do it, and then... Oh, if it's MRS1, MRS1. So let 
right? You need like another condition So yeah, so then It was 45. I'm going to get 98. 35. 35. I'm going to get 88. So I should just check this. Because this was 215, right? 35. So 35 plus is 88. Yeah, I should just check this.
Which is if I satisfy track time on equality. Yeah, or if it's, it's not even, or if it's too big. It's pretty good. I just have wait. I waited F wasn't that great. I don't know. Alright, well, looks like a pretty clear second place here. Um, I'm gonna go through and talk about these problems real quick. So first let's open up. So problem A, you're given a time and then you're given a bunch of alarm times. You want to find the closest alarm time that comes after your time. Um, basically, we just convert all these uh, to just minutes so we get easier to compute. You, you do that with 60 times H plus M. And then this is just like a modular calculation. Um, we want to get alarm minus sleep, but we want it to be you know, positive so we can kind of uh, Make sure it is, um, we take it modulo 1440, and then C++ negative mods don't work that great, so we need to add 1440 just to make sure it works. Um, that's it, yeah, and we need to output this from it, which uh, this is kind of the reverse of this. Problem B, um, basically, since we're removing things from the front until the elements are unique, we're just finding the longest unique suffix. So that's what we do here. Grab all the values, create a boolean array for what's been seen, and keep adding the, the last, um, the rightmost thing, as long as it's not been seen, and then print that at the end. Alright, C. Uh, we're finding the smallest number that has all distinct digits. It has a sum of digits as a given number. Um, so yeah, what we do here is actually we just try all uh, we can only use 1 through 9, we're not going to use 0 because that would be kind of silly. Um, so we just try all 2 to the 9 options and check the sum and then build a number. Obviously you build the number in increasing order, like you would build 389, not 938. Um, let me just take the min over the values that have that sum. And this parses a string to a number, which is helpful. Um, Problem D. Um, this one, we want to kind of stamp the string with the minimum number of um, smaller strings where we are allowed to overlap. Um, I saw this with a 
dp um, on prefixes. So you want us to figure out for each prefix, what is the smallest number of steps we need to finish the prefix? And then the transitions, basically you start with a prefix, you pick a string, and then you figure out where to put the string. The string needs to overlap with um, your the end of your current prefix. So either it needs to at least uh, it needs to at least add one more character, or it can start uh, as late as right at the end of your prefix. Um, and this is um, um, just tracking to make sure we know where the previous values are, so we can reconstruct it, because uh, that's what we do here. And we take the previous values, I'll put them, and then pull back. And oh, one thing I want to do was I want to use C plus plus string compare. It says so many overloads that I'm always confused how to use it. But I think what we wanted was if t dot oh, I should say first actually. I think what we wanted is if t dot compare string view like pause count. I guess we just want compare. Start Is that what we want? I think that's what we want. Okay, we can just submit because it's ICPC scoring. Yeah, okay, cool. Um And that just, instead of grabbing the substring, that just ends the comparison early if you uh, already found a mismatch. Which, in this case, doesn't actually improve the worst case, so it's not that important. Um, but yeah, the important thing here is to do the prefix dp, try each string, try each starting point that could be relevant. Ooh. Okay. Um, test. No, yeah, we're good. Try each starting point that could be relevant, and if it improves things, then you can uh, store them and then store all the previous values so you can reconstruct. Um, and that made the reconstruction pretty easy here. I'm actually a little confused how this took me a good six minutes. It just looks like it took some people much less than that. Uh, well, maybe like four minutes, I guess that's not that much less. Um, Yeah, anyway, um, we'll keep going. What's next? Problem E. Oh, so problem E, you have add modulo 10. Um, and this is what I noticed for this problem. Uh, basically, you can add the last digit of the number to the number. So 47 becomes plus 7 equals 54. And then do it again. 54 plus 4 equals 58. Um, and you can create a graph of the last digits. So it looks something like this. Um, I don't know how I'm going to draw self loop. Uh, I guess I can just do this. Zero goes to zero, right? Zero is stuck in itself, and then five goes to zero. So what you'll notice is that there are two separate cycles. Um, one goes to two, goes to four, goes to eight, goes to six, just goes back to two. And then there are a couple other pieces to add in. Uh, 7 goes here, 9 goes here, and 3 goes here. So this is a cycle 2, 4, 8, 6, and 1, 3, 7, and 9 put into it. And essentially, um, you cannot uh, cross between these two sections. You have to stay in your section. So the first thing to check is, well, first of all, if we have any 5s or 0s, in this case, we check that here. If we have any of those, then they all need to be fives or zeros. 
And the only thing we can do is we can bump up the fives by five and then we're stuck. So uh, if there are any zeros, then we need to bump up all the fives by five to hit zero and then we need all the numbers to be the same. Um, so we, what we actually can do is we might as well bump all the fives because if they're all fives, that's fine. Um, so we just do that, bubble the fives, check if everything is equal, if so it's yes, otherwise it's no. Um, and that's the has five case. Now we're going to assume we don't have any fives, meaning no fives or zeros, all the numbers we have are in this cycle. Um, and essentially the only problem we can run into is, because we can keep going forever, the only problem we can run into is when you go 2 to 4 to 8 to 6, Notice that from 8 to 6, we added another 10. And then from 6 to 2, we also add another 10. So for example, if we start at 2, then we go to 4, we go to 8, we go to 16, then we go to 22. Then we can keep going, 24, 28, uh, 36, and then 42. So what you notice is that um, the 2s all have the same value module 20. Um, so you can only jump up by 20 if you're keeping the same last digit. Um, and that's really the only constraint we have remaining that we need to satisfy. So the way I coded this to make this actually pretty easy was I just go through every number and add, do the operation until they end with the two because they're all going to get to the cycle. And then all I need to check is that all the values are equal mod 20. So I'll just mod everything by 20 and then make sure everything is equal. And if so, the answer is yes, otherwise no. Um, so that's E. Keep going, two more problems. F. Okay, so problem F, this is a bit of a tricky one. There's a lot of cases to handle. But we're given N, we're given D2, or D12, D23, and D31. We want to build a tree where the distances between those pairs line up with those numbers. So first I read the input, put it into this array to make it easier. Um, find the max of the three and find the sum of the three. And so first of all, if the two small ones are less than the biggest one, that's just the triangle inequality. If we fail the triangle inequality, that's a no. Um, and then also if the sum isn't even, that is a no. The sum needs to be even because we can go from zero to one, go from one to two, go from two to zero. And we've sort of retraced our own steps and that needs to be an even number of steps uh, because, of, because it's a tree, because of parity. Um, if that's not the case, then then we have a problem. Um, and then the other case where it's uh, a problem is if the sum is too big. Because if the sum is too big, then we actually cannot, we, we don't have enough nodes to build that. So in particular, um, the number of uh, the number of nodes you'll need to build your tree is going to be 1 plus the sum over 2. Um, that kind of comes out later when you analyze these two cases. And in those cases, it's, if, if the sum is too big, then it's not possible. Uh, otherwise, it is possible, and there are two cases. Um, I realize now that I could have combined these into one. So. This is interesting. Maybe I can refactor my code this way. Let's see. So, let's do some. Also have the yeah array and three legs. Yes. And I think regardless of how we do it, we can just build it like this.
I think this should actually work. Oh, the search and fail. Let's see, so what did we do wrong here? Um, oh, if no evil center, we can do this. Okay, so. Oh. Nice. Um, so basically, now we have we have two possibilities. One possibility is that um, the sum of the smaller two distances equals the bigger distance. In which case, one of the nodes is kind of in the middle. So you have like one of the nodes right here, which has a path to one node and a path to the other node on the other side. Um, so it's just kind of a path where one of them is in the middle of the path. In that case, we figure out which one is in the middle um, because we find the max distance and the middle one is the other one. And then uh, in that case, yeah, we just have fairly simple case where one of the legs is on zero. Otherwise, we have a case where we are kind of building a three-pronged star um, and we, find, we can find the distance from the center to each of the uh, three nodes because um, Basically, just a little bit of basic algebra. The distance to zero is just d01 plus d02 minus d12 divided by two. Um, and same for the other two. And so we have the distances to all three nodes, and we just need to build that. So we start with the center, just build out, add edges to each of those three nodes, add those you know, uh, legs of the star, and then afterward we just fill out the rest of the nodes any way we want to, it doesn't really matter. Um, yeah, and then output, and we're good. Um, yeah, so that's problem F. A uh, bunch of different like cases to handle for invalid cases, and then, uh, yeah, I should have done my code like this in contest, that would have made it a little simpler for sure. But uh, we got through, we got, I guess it didn't really matter because I had a whole 20 minute window to get second. Uh, so kind of could just take my time. But uh, yeah, that's problem F. And one more, which is problem G. Uh, this one was definitely easier than F in my opinion. Basically, you have a tree rooted at one. You have two values per edge. And for each node, let's say for node eight, you have, uh, you know the blue sum, two plus four is six, and you wanna find the longest prefix of this path where the red sum in this case, one plus three, for example, is at most six. And in this case, the answer is two. You can just do the entire prefix. Um, for something like node five, you have the blue sum five plus nine plus two, which is uh, 16. And we can only do a prefix of two. Because you do on the reds, you do six plus 10, and then that's it, we're already full. So the answer would be two. Uh, let me just put the answer for everything. So um, the way I did this, I just used my LCA class to handle the tree. Just input everything and then convert A and B to the sums because that's what we actually want. And then I just do a binary search and I have this handy helper function called get kth ancestor. And I just use that and then I uh, check if it works and update my binary search. This is technically log squared because this, this technically takes a login time to get the kth ancestor. But uh, otherwise, it is quite fast, and if I wanted to optimize this to log, I could also do that. I guess some jump pointers. There's something called a level ancestor, 
uh, problem where there's an O of 1 solution. I'm not actually super familiar with this solution, but I know it is possible. Um, and so if you could also do that to make this uh, just a single walk, but it doesn't really matter, it's fine. I don't think that I even use that much of the time limit. It's three seconds, I use like, yeah, very fast. So that's all good. Anyway, that's it for this contest. Uh, nice little finish. Um, too bad Gennady entered because <laughs> would have been first. But anyway, uh, it's all good. Uh, and I'll see you in the next video.